When we're a community of transformation, when we look at Acts and we see that there is a place where favor rests on us and they're led by a word from the Lord. Uh, how many of you know the, st- how, uh, how do we do this? How many of you know the story of how we came to be in this building? Raise your hands. Okay, so I wanna tell a quick story of, of a, a testimony of how we came to be in this place because it is, it is about being led by a word of the Lord and seeing his favor showing up and opening doors even when it was incredibly difficult and not everything has been super straightforward. So Kate and I came to Living Waters. We joined the team uh, in like 2000 and we've been here ever since, this is it. And so we walked that journey of being on the team with Garrison Jan, and and after several years of doing that, I think it was, I'm gonna mess up my dates, but say 2013, something like that, Garrison Jan came to Kate and I and said, uh, you guys have been on our team for 13 years, you've been faithful, um, and we, we would love to transition the leadership of the Church of Living Waters to you and Kate. And so we said, we prayed about that for a long time. Um, and as we prayed about that, we asked the Lord, for a word and for a directive. And so at the time that we, from 2000 on, for a lot of those years, we lived on Holly Street downtown. And so we would drive up to the old church building up on Roberts Road by North Medford High School. It had about 6,000 square feet total. Uh, all the youth room, the kids rooms, the adult area, it was, it was, that, was that was total. And, um, and we would drive up there, we would drive back and forth to work every day. And we didn't know that we would become the senior leaders of this church or anything like that. But we would drive back and forth to work and we would pray and we would pray this, God, would you give us a, uh, would you give us a church in the city? And what we were dreaming into then was was that we thought that Garrison Jan would probably send us out of Living Waters to plant a church down here in the city and that we would be able to work in partnership with them because we believe that they have, they still do and that they did have so much to give and, and, and pour out for the kingdom. So that's what we envisioned. So we would pray every day, God, would you open up this city that we would have a church in the city. We know that you have much that you want to do to get to reach a city. You have to reach the heart of the city. To reach the heart of the city, you got to be in the heart of the city and you have to show up. And we that's what we were prophesying and that's the word that the Lord gave us. And so when they asked us to become the pastors of the church or the leaders of the church, the, one of the first questions we asked them was, could we move from this building downtown? If God figures out a way to do it, would you be okay if we moved out of where we've been to where we feel like God is calling us to go? And they said, sure, you can do that. And so fast forward, as we stepped into leadership, that property up there with 6,000 square feet, we, we uh, had a few empty acres. And so we, uh, we, 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 we said, well, what, if, what if we sold the acreage that was up there and we looked around for a building that was downtown that we could fit into? And so we began to search and we began to pray and we began to go, okay. And, I, and we looked at every building that we could think of in the city. Like I toured building after building. My favorite building is still the brick building on, on 10th Street. You know, like the, we, we walked through there so many times. Say, Jesus, because that was the one we would walk. We would drive by it every time. So um, we were believing for that. So you know how we get Pentecostals, right? I believe I'm claiming that one. I want, I want that one. I had like 17 buildings claimed. Uh, I don't know how that works, uh, but it, it doesn't. Um, and so I, I, we, we looked at so many buildings and, and we had some, some opportunity maybe to sell like the empty property that was up there at Living Waters and, and we had an offer on it and it was like X amount of dollars. Can that, can that money allow us to get a campus downtown? Maybe we could have two campuses. Like, is there enough? It's not enough. There's no way it's enough. And so we, we went through the whole process and uh, one day after church, uh, a gentleman who had been attending the church for a little while, he came up to me and he said, I, I remember the, a few weeks back, you guys presented this dream that you have to move the church downtown. Um, how's that going? And I was like, it's not going. There's nothing, there's nothing downtown. Uh, we've looked at every building. They're too expensive to fit people, to be able to do all this stuff. And he said, he said, have you looked at the Lithia building? And I'm like, this building literally, I swear, like God cloaked it. Like Star Trek, like cloaked it. I didn't see it. I, I've been here since I was since 1976, right? Like I was like the Lithia Building. Remind me the Lithia Building. He's like the one that sits right downtown. I was like, I, I don't. Yeah, let's go look at it. So that day after church, he said, "My friend owns the building. I got keys in my pocket. Let's go look at it after church today." So we walked into this building the first time, and God was like, "This is the one." Hey, you've been claiming all the wrong buildings. This is the one. But God stores up the prayers of the right, and He just said, "No, this is not how it's going to look. You think it's this way, but it's going to be this way." And so we walked in here, and we were like, "Oh my gosh!" And He said. Do you want to do you want to buy it? And I was like, um, well, uh, 
we went from selling part of our land uh, to having to sell all of it and move the church down into the city, which typically they wouldn't recommend you do in the first like 18 months of leading a church. Um, <laughs> or taking on a church in Ashland, which we still love and loved. And so anyway, um, <clears throat> do you want to buy it? And I said, I don't, I don't think we can. I don't think we can afford it. I don't know how that would work to move a church, blah, 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 blah. The guy who was interested in buying the property called me back that week and he said, hey, we, you know, we'd be kind of interested in buying the, just the, the empty land, but what if we bought the whole thing? And I was like, oh, okay. So how much would you sell or would you buy the whole thing for? And, uh, and they said, well, about... 1.75 million. Okay, that's awesome. So we said, let's see how much the Lithia building is for. So we called the, we had the conversation with Lithia building. And uh, so this building was available, all of this 40, almost 40,000 square feet. We're going from 6,000 square feet to 40,000 square feet in the heart of the city. Why? We had a word. We were directed by the Lord. We're believing that he's going to open doors. Uh, and they said, we'll sell you this building for 1.25 million. So we said, yes, um, we can move our church from 6,000 square feet to 38,000 square feet in the heart of the city in the way that we feel like God is calling us to do and the things he's asking us to do start here in the heart of the city. And we can put $400,000 or whatever it was in our, in our pockets um, to be able to buy those Porsches that we really wanted. And um, <laughs> hallelujah, give to double offering morning. Uh, and so we were able to use that money to get the building to the point where it is now and, uh, and to do all of the architectural drawings, to do all of the planning, to get all of the things done. We put about $100,000 of that, or maybe more than that, probably $150,000 into just getting it to where it is now. And so as COVID approached, so that's where we sat. As, as COVID approached, we were getting ready to step into phase two of the renovation, which involves, for some of you, if you haven't walked over there, there's three huge bays on that side of the building that we would love to develop and use. We want them to be useful, not for Sunday gatherings only. We want them to be useful for the city. We want to be useful for people. We want this to be a place that's functioning every day of the week, if possible, and not just like, oh, look at our cool sanctuary we built for two hours on Sunday morning. It cost us $6 million. Rat. <laughs> but what if we thought about a building that was for the city after the heart of the city and it reflected the heart of this place in everything that we do. And so we've been gifted as God has le led us. I, did, I almost said God has left us. He is not. As God has led us to this place. Um, we are answering that call. And so what you're going to see in, as we have come out of this last season and we, again, are feeling that fresh vision and that awakening to, to pick up again and to do the renovations that we believe God has for this building, you're going to see probably the first thing you're going to notice is the outside of the building being painted this summer. Um, we believe that that's something that God's put on our heart to do. That will allow us to say, hey, we're here. Like, we're here. And it'll awaken people um, to, to what's happening. And then we will work on getting that larger room over there opened up for us to be on Sunday mornings, but also for events and for outreaches. We still have the warehouse on that end that you guys know as part of this miracle. I was like, God, why is it taking so long to renovate this building? My mindset. Why is it taking so long? We've got money. People are ready to give. People are ready to work. But it never felt like we quite pulled the trigger on getting it really going, what was going on, and then the fires happened. You guys know the miracle of having this building to be able to take hundreds and th thousands of dollars of relief uh, efforts and work and goods and bring them through this house right out into the city, right out into people that needed it because we had this space. If I'd have had my way, that would have all been built out into who knows what, like bathrooms and kitchens and meeting area. It wouldn't have been a place where FEMA could back up a truck and say, here's 72 pallets of water for you guys to give out or here's the tents that people need or whatever. So it's just such a rad miracle of how God has done that. And so you're going to see us continuing to renovate and move this project forward because it's time and we believe Believe, and our, our leadership council and our team uh, believe that it's time to, to pick that back up after an extremely difficult couple years where we said, let's just hold for, for a little bit. And as we held, God had an incredible use for the, for the city, but now we feel his, his heart leading us forward again. And it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be perfect. And so that's what we wanted you to know. We didn't want to start doing renovation and work. And, and you're like, what's going on? We want you to be a part of that story and a part of that journey. Um, there will be opportunities as always to serve, to, to help, to give, like we're, we'll, we'll let you know about all of that. 